Good morning. Welcome to Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord at St. Francis de Sales Parish. My name is Lynn Richardson. We are pleased to have you here today. If you are new or returning to the parish, welcome packets can be found at all church entrances or at the parish office, which is open in the Faith and Family Center Monday through Thursday and Sunday mornings. Please note that Easter closings are noted in the bulletin. Our mass intention today is for deceased, our deceased loved ones. Let us ask each other for their prayer needs as we stand and greet our fellow parishioners. Today, we pray. <laughs> Today, we pray for vocations to the priesthood, consecrated and married life, for our own clergy, our Bishop Earl, all the bishops, and Francis, our Pope. Now, together, let us cite the prayer on the screen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, you speak to us and nourish us through the life of this church community. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to send your spirit to us so that men and women among us, young and old, will respond to your call to service and leadership in the church. We pray especially for those who hear your invitation to be a priest, sister, brother, or deacon. May those who are opening their hearts and minds to your call be encouraged and strengthened through our enthusiasm in praising, serving, and following you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing. Let us spend a moment in sacred silence to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. The, procession, the solemn procession will be again in the back for the Palm Sunday.
Please face the rear of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God the Father, the love of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We're going to come along and bless your branches and you. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the great crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palm branches and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found an ass and sat upon it as is written, Fear no more, O daughter Zion. See, your king comes, seat him upon an ass's colt. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus had been glorified, they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done this for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, 
Brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Let us pray for a closer union with Christ during this holy season. Almighty, ever-living God, who, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see 
scoff at me They mock me with parted lips They wag their heads He relied on the Lord Let him deliver him Let him rescue him If he loves him My God, my God Why? Many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why? They divide my garments among them And for my vesture they cast lots But you, O Lord, be not far from me O my help, hasten to aid me My God, my God Why? I will proclaim your name in the midst of the assembly I will praise you you fear the Lord praise him all you descendants of Jacob give glory to him my God my God why Proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise him. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him. All you descendants of Israel, my God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion will be available on the screen, and you're invited to recite the parts labeled C for the crowd. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark, the, pa the Passover of the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest Jesus by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that they may, there may be a riot among the people. When Jesus was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured the oil on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good thing to, you can do good thing to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen. I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed a Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I, he said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes, as is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And then they all spoke similarly. 
Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a, a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately came over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards warming himself at the fire. The chief priests in the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. 
he broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin held a, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over. But the chief priests stirred, the cra stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see eat what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription, the charge against him, read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two bandits, one at his right and one at his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last.
The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and of Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who himself, awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in a linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout the liturgical year, we are acutely aware that God does not send his word into the world. He sends his word into the world, but it does not return to him void, but only accomplishes the purpose for which he sent it. And there is no other week during the year when we are more aware of this than during Holy Week. In fact, you might say that all of the other 51 weeks of the year have just served to prepare us for what is happening this week. Holy Mother Church, being the good teacher and the good mother that she is, causes us to stop, to pause, to consider closely what is happening, not only each day of this week, but at each moment of each day in this week. And we here in the community of St. Francis are preparing to support you to draw yourself even more deeply into the great Paschal mystery and to understand not only what has God accomplished in the passion, death, and resurrection of his son, but to understand more deeply what he has accomplished just for you. The contemplation begins right now. Right now, you and I are following Jesus as he enters into Jerusalem, knowing what will happen next. Tomorrow, on the Monday of Holy Week, we will celebrate the Mass at the usual time of 6 o'clock, and it will be another, invita another invitation to understand more clearly the reality of Christ as he makes his way toward that final celebration of the Feast of Passover with his 12 apostles. On Tuesday, I always put a highlighter through Tuesday for all of you because while we will not celebrate the usual 12 o'clock Mass here at St. Francis, we will celebrate the Chrism Mass at 3.30 at St. Paul's in Westerville. I encourage all of you to go because there are things that happen during the Chrism Mass that do not happen at any other place or at any other time in the liturgical year. Bishop Fernandez will bless the holy oils that we use in the administration of the sacraments at the appropriate time and place throughout the year. And on a much more personal level, uh, all of the priests of the diocese will renew their priestly vows. 
in which I declare again and pledge my life in service to Christ and to all of you. On Wednesday, uh, again, Mass will be here at the usual time at 6.30 on Wednesday. But following the Mass on Wednesday, we will be celebrating an extended period of offering the Sacrament of Penance. Father Dave likes to call this the last chance confession. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, this is an event that is offered throughout the diocese. And if you have been in the good habit of making a confession during Lent, perhaps this time is not the best for you. Because this time is specifically intended for anyone who may have been delaying the celebration of the Sacrament of Penance. And so Father Dave and I and Father Jesse from Church of the Resurrection will be here on Wednesday night. We will remain here until every confession is heard. Absolutely encourage each of you, particularly those who have not yet made a good confession during this season to come on Wednesday night and know not only the forgiveness, but the profound freedom that God has in store for you in the grace of that sacrament. On Thursday, again, uh, Mass is at a special time. We will begin at five o'clock on Thursday, gathering for a community potluck uh, in Johnson Hall. Uh, that will be followed at 6.30 by the Mass of the Last Supper. And again, things happen at the celebration of Holy Thursday that don't happen anywhere else during the year. That we are celebrating principally two things. Number one, the institution of the Eucharist at the Last Supper and also the institution of the Sacrament of Holy Orders. At the conclusion of the Holy Thursday Mass, uh, we will process back to the chapel uh, with the Blessed Sacrament. The Blessed Sacrament will be available there for adoration uh, until 11 o'clock. Meanwhile, uh, we're also uh, gonna be showing the film, The Passion of the Cross, over in Murphy Hall beginning at 8 o'clock. Uh, if you haven't seen that movie, understand that it is a very clear representation of our Lord's passion and our Lord's death. And I know personally, I have never prayed any of the Stations of the Cross in the same way since I have seen them depicted in Mel Gibson's film. So if you haven't seen it, I absolutely encourage you to come. May not be the best film for small children, uh, but uh, absolutely all who can, uh, please come to Murphy Hall at eight o'clock. Following the film and right about 11 o'clock, we will come back over to the church uh, for night prayer for Compline. It's one of the seven hours of the daily prayer of the church, and we'll all be gathering at 11 in the chapel to pray night prayer and to repose the body of our Lord in preparation for Good Friday. On Good Friday, again, not a usual day in the church. It's the one day in the church year where Mass is not celebrated. However, we will be gathering first at 3 o'clock for celebration of the Stations of the Cross, and we will regather at 7 p.m. here in the church for the celebration of the veneration of the cross. And so again, just like today, we are visualizing ourselves following Christ in his reentry into Jerusalem on Thursday. We are visualizing ourselves sitting around the table with Christ at the Last Supper. On Friday, we will gather and put ourselves in the position of contemplating Christ himself as he hangs upon the cross. On Holy Saturday, again, a, very, a unique day in the life of the church, we will first gather at nine o'clock on Holy Saturday 
to uh, celebrate the morning prayer for a uh, Holy Saturday. And again, contemplating the grief, the sorrow, the isolation, the coldness of the tomb and how the early church must have experienced that first day of rising after Christ died on Good Friday. At 11 o'clock, we will be praying a walking stations of the cross in the rear parking lot of the church and also beginning our preparation for the Easter Vigil. If Holy Week is the week that all other weeks of the year aspire to be, Easter Vigil is the day that all other days of Holy Week aspire to be. I tell my Protestant friends and family, if you want to see Holy Mother Church in her best dress ever, come to Easter Vigil. Again, we will begin at 9 o'clock. The church will begin as the universe began in darkness, and we will walk our way through uh, the proclamation of the of salvation history leading up to the acknowledgement of the victory over sin and death won by our Lord and Savior in his resurrection. At 11 o'clock that night following the vigil mass, we will gather for a reception uh, in Johnson Hall. You'll have the opportunity to greet those who are newly received into full communion uh, with the church at that uh, vigil mass. Also, uh, the opportunity again to sit and greet one another. Of course, on Sunday morning, we'll be celebrating uh, the mass of our Lord's resurrection uh, at 7.30, 9.30, and 11.30. And then finally, but certainly not least, uh, following the 1130 Mass, uh, we'll be offering the annual Easter egg hunt and Holy Grounds Social Sunday. So, for those of you uh, with age-appropriate people for an Easter egg hunt, there will be areas set up around the church. We'll have one, uh, uh, one area set aside for the littles, I think was Father Dave's phrase, and then other areas for other participants. Uh, I was asked earlier today, well, how old is too old? And I said, you know what? We don't judge. So all are welcome. I want to say again, what a profound honor it is to be with you here right now. Because I pray that you will all join me in seeing our risen Lord and Savior at this celebration of Holy Week in a way that you have never seen him before. Now, my brothers and sisters, let us stand and together declare our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we enter into this Holy Week, resolved to journey with Jesus from death to new life, let us put on the mind and heart of Christ as we lift in prayer all those in need. That the Holy Spirit may sanctify the church and her observances of this solemn week, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's exaltation of the name of Jesus may bring people of all nations to their knees. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God may not abandon the distressed, the dying, or those sentenced to death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus may journey together with us through experiences of loss and sacrifice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful response of all men and women called to follow Christ and his passion through a vocation to the priesthood or consecrated life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased loved ones of grieving with great hope, our mass intention this morning, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died, especially Joseph Stenson, may enter the heavenly Jerusalem, joining the angels and saints in giving glory to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Saving God, you sent your only begotten Son to save us from our sins. Strengthen our resolve to surrender ourselves to your will so that we may be fitting disciples of your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. to 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth. Pleni sunt celi et terra, gloria tua. Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini. Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Earl, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living in true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, 
to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Mortem Tuam Annunciam Hosto Omne Et Tuam Resurrectionem Confitema Donec Veni Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, and all of your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay, qui tolis pecat amundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis pecat amundi, miserere nobis. On you stay. We told us we got a mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
to passion. Good shepherd, be of me with your most sweet compassion. Stay with me, remain here with me, watch and pray, watch and pray, stay i 
Why is it important for the church to walk with moms in need? Wow, is there anyone more important than a mother? Every parish is a place where a woman can know the church has a place for me to be received and heard. And part of walking with moms in need is being the voice that speaks peace, the ear that listens, and is willing to say, let's do this together. Let's find the resources. I didn't have diapers, I didn't have baby wipes. I was almost at risk of losing my apartment. Walking with moms in need actually helped me stay hopeful that there was a way to get out of that situation. They gave me that support and enthusiasm that I can do it and that it is possible. Walking with Moms in Need, I believe, is an anointed effort to be the hands and feet of Jesus at the parish level. It is accompanying women who find themselves with nowhere else to go to help them in that moment of emergency. And if we're ready to receive them, welcome them, and accompany them to the resources they need, we can make a massive difference. When a woman comes to us and asks for help and uh, shows her vulnerability and tells us that she has a need, it's an opportunity for the church to say, hey, you're not alone, I'm here with you. And, and that's amazing to have that opportunity. When I started as the coordinator for Walking with Moms in Need through Catholic Charities, I read the Parish Action Guide. When I was reading it, I could just feel the Holy Spirit's work. And through this, you just see how many people are here working to help women and families. Pope Francis says that we're to be an island of mercy and a sea of indifference. And we see Walking with Moms in Need as a way to unite as a people of life. And I think we had over 200 direct, unique calls to our office to find out how can we get this started in our parish. If every single parish has a Walking with Moms in Need group, we'll be helping women and babies and children and families to know and experience the love of Jesus. We're well over 100 women served by the parishes since we really got started in 2021. The excitement of this is that we're still just getting started.
So one other item with the walking with moms, uh, there's a full page in the bulletin with all the details in it. Uh, so please see it for all for everything and all the. And if you have any questions, that we have a core team to uh, working within this ministry for you. Just stop by the parish office and talk with Vicki Pressy or call the office for more information. And then Pontifical Good Friday Collection. It's Pope Francis's request that we support this Good Friday Collection to help Christians in the Holy Land. Your contribution supports Catholics there in parishes and schools. It is used to maintain Christian shrines and care for refugees in the Holy Land. And your generosity is appreciated. Catholic Youth Summer Camp, we have a block of spots for both boys and girls going into grades 6 through 12 for Catholic Youth Summer Camp at Damascus Catholic Mission Campus in Centerburg. Damascus, as you know, is a high adventure, high faith experience for our youth that leave them begging for more of Jesus. Now, Catholic Youth Summer Camp sold out last fall. Uh, for this summer, all 6,000 slots are sold out, which is beautiful. Um, our camp dates here at St. Francis are Sunday, June 30th through Friday, July 5th. And we have a limited number of spots still available because back in the summer of 23, we pre-reserved. So we bought out a block of spots. We've got about 60 kids already signed up, and we still have some spots that are available. We're, going, we're being asked to release those back to the camp, those spots that have not been taken, after Easter. So you've got a week. If there's any that are still here that want to go to the camp, it is an incredible experience. It's unlike like any church camp you would ever think about, right? Kids come back on fire with a love for Jesus, and they have a blast at the camp. So um, you've got to let us know. Pre-register with us, and you can do that on your own. You can just um, go through our stfrancisparish.net forward slash register. It's on our website. It's also on our church center app. And um, once you pre-register, we'll send you all the details you need on securing your spot. Cleaning crews needed. If you remember, at last week I asked for your support in cleaning our churches on a weekly, our, our church, the interior of our church on a weekly basis. We heard from a few of you, but we need to hear from many, many more of you for this work. We clean our church. We don't hire this out to a service. This is our church. This is the house of God. And we do that. And the way we do that is you. As your parishioners proud of the beauty of your church and wanting it to be a place of hospitality and welcome for everyone that comes in here. So if you're interested, and I hope that you are, please contact Jennifer Wynn uh, through the parish office or you can click on the link for Thursday's flock note, and it'll take you right to contacting her. You can even stop after this Mass over at the parish office and talk with Vicki and say, I want to help with this. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the Father of all mercies, who has given you an example of love and the passion of his only begotten Son, grant that by serving God and your neighbor, you may lay hold of the wondrous gift of his blessing. Amen. So that you may receive the reward of everlasting life from him, through whose earthly death you believe that you escape eternal death. Amen. And by following the example of his self-abasement, may you possess a share in his resurrection. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me how great. How great, how great is our God. And age to age he stands, and time is in his hands. Beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, the Father speaks. Son, the lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names. Oh, God. 